Hello and ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all well and healthy and enjoying a pleasant weekend so far. Today we've got another sort of, well not sort of, but we do have another presentation for you and it's another lovely prehistoric animal. Today we're going to be focused on a large armoured prehistoric fish by the name of Dunkleosteus, meaning Dunkle's bone. Dunkleosteus, if I'm pronouncing it right, because I think it is Dunkleosteus, I don't think it's Dunkleus or Dunkleosteus, but I think it is Dunkleosteus. Belong to a class of animals by the name of the Placidermi, meaning plate skinned. And if you clearly have a look at this image of Dunkleosteus, you can see the massive like armoured plates attached to it. It's also an extremely cool picture of it as well. There's a lovely little image of a Devonian period landscape. Well, ocean I should say, not landscape, but I was just using that as a general term. I think we've got some Dunkleosteus clearly been seen, some other sort of some some other form of armoured fish at the bottom. Possibly like trilobites at the bottom, but I don't know if they went extinct at that time. And I think that is a certain shark species, also known as the ironboard shark, uh, by the name of Stephylocanthus in the background. But moving on, Dunkleosteus lived during the Devonian period, which is actually quite ironically and well named as it's actually called the Age of Fish. With Dunkleosteus roaming the Devonian oceans roughly 380 to 360 million years ago. The larger species of Dunkleosteus was Dunkleosteus terrellii, which measured up to nearly 10 metres or closer to actually 33 foot long and could weigh up to nearly 4 tonnes or 4,000 kilograms to be exact, so one hefty big fish. Fossils of Dunkleosteus have been located in North America, Poland, Belgium and Morocco, and Dunkleosteus was a hypercarnivore, which is an extremely cool term, meaning its diet consisted of around 70% meat or animal matter, and with it being an apex predator, it's most likely top of the Devonian food chain. Here we've got an another nice little, I wouldn't say pleasant image, but a nice little uh, graphic of Dunkleosteus. And it's also quite safe to say, due to its heavily armoured, bulky appearance, that Dunkleosteus was most likely a slow, but powerful swimmer when it was actually called upon. Dunkleosteus possessed two pairs of sharp bony plates, which actually form like a beak-like structure, almost similar to a lot of avian species, such as parrots, for example certain lovely dinosaur called Psittacosaurus, which has like a beak as a mouth, which you should look at as well. But Dunkleosteus, and Placoderms in general, may have been among the first actual vertebrates to internalise egg fertilisation, which is also seen in modern day shark species, because a lot of them actually give uh, birth to live young and uh, do internal fertilisation, inter internal fertilisation I should say. Getting a bit mixed up with the words there, but got there in the end. But yeah, Dunkleosteus was a heavily armoured carnivore as it goes, and it was also quite dangerous. You wouldn't be the most, it wouldn't be the most fastest moving predator, but you certainly would not want to come across it. Dunkleosteus only really had one rival in terms of size at this time period on the Devonian. This animal was called Titanicus, meaning quite well named Titanic fish. It was roughly 10 metres long, perhaps larger, and we have quite a nice little representation of it in the top side of the screen. I apologise for that noise, my cat is just barging into my room and is demanding a fuss, but yeah. It was most likely more of actually a filter feeding fish rather than an actual carnival. Here's a slightly little terrifying image of Dunkleosteus. But apart from the protection, the armour of Dunkleosteus could observe other purposes and functions, such as being the necessary material needed to break through other armoured placoderms or possibly other du uh, Dunkleosteus species. With a sharp serrated beak like jaws, the chances of Dunkleosteus cutting through Placiderm armour greatly increased due to the actual structure they were uh, designed in, you could say, for evolution. The other reason is that Dunkleosteus needed powerful jaws and driving power to actually cut and break apart potential prey. This would all only work with very powerful jaw muscles as well, which have been supported by Dunkleosteus like armoured frame and head. Although Dunkleosteus had a powerful bite, it was not the strongest fish by any means, which actually goes to Carcharodon megalodon, meaning big tooth. And I, I know like, not everyone would have heard of it, but I'd be quite surprised if a lot of people that didn't know a bit about prehistoric life would have not heard of megalodon, because it's sort of a cult thing now about the me megalodon, like the great massive great white shark. Well, ain't this a lovely little drawing? I wish I could actually draw quite as well as this, but my drawing skills are not the best. I apologise for the noise outside, it is someone attempting to cut down a tree next door and it is getting on my fucking nerves, pardon for my language, but it ruined my other 
slide I was doing before anyway because I didn't have my windows shut. But moving on, we have some fun armoured fishy facts for you ladies and gents. I'm going to start with wounds and actually injuries found in Dunkleosteus fossils appear to be made by other Dunkleosteus, indicating cannibalism. You have several several different invertebrate species that engage in cannibalism, I think praying mantids do. Two dinosaurs I can think of that are cannibalistic are Mahungasaurus, which I covered in a previous video, and Coelophysis, which was a very old dinosaur that lived during the Triassic period. And I've got to give it another mention, although Dunkleosteus had a very powerful bite, Carcharodon Megalodon had the most powerful bite amongst fish, and it also had a very well fitting name, Big Tooth. First off, this is a really, really cool like drawing of Dunkleosteus, if it is slightly demonic and a bit hell looking. This is like what would happen if Lucifer sent a army of Dunkleosteus like terrorise the oceans in the modern day. But moving on, Dunkleosteus had a very useful hunting adaptation as it was able to open its jaws exceptionally fast, creating a vacuum that sucked the water and prey located nearby into its mouth. Although Dunkleosteus was top of the food chain, that did not give it invincibility, as, as said before. As fossil evidence actually manages to show damage upon Dunkleosteus plates that was actually inflicted by other Dunkleosteus species. So juvenile, uh, Dunkleosteus and sub-adult sub Dunkleosteus, Dunkleosteus would have actually been prey to larger Dunkleosteus and perhaps like really large mature adults. The possible explanation for this could actually be territorial disputes but it's most likely a more sadistic uh, form of cannibalism amongst this species. Finishes off, we've got a very lovely little image of a beautifully rendered Dunkleosteus that appears to be gobbling up some poor helpless squid or cephalopod, I think it is. I think it's cephalopod that are squids and not octopi. But moving on, as always, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. I apologise for the bloody noise outside, but outside, but it couldn't really be helped. It's just some people trying to cut down a tree next door when they have to make the most noise. Well, as much noise as too many possible when it seems... Uh, to be engaged in that particular activity which really pisses me off but moving on if you enjoyed the video feel free to comment and like it or dislike it or give it negative reviews i do not mind i'll make these for my personal enjoyment and for yours not for actually getting a uh, youtube monies and join the raptor pack today by subscribing and i will be hopefully releasing another video in the next coming days but i'm just slowing down a little bit because i've been quite busy recently but i hope you enjoy